Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be putting together an awesome little Ryzen powered mini PC using the all new ASRock Desk Mini X300. Now with the X300, I need to add some storage, some RAM, and a decent cooler. The X300 does come with a smaller cooler, but the CPU that I'm going to be using in this will require a lot more than that can offer because this whole setup is actually going to be powered by the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G, 8 cores, 16 threads with built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics. I've been sitting on this APU for a little while. I picked it up on eBay, gray market style, because these aren't publicly available. You can get one, but you're going to pay a premium for it. And I've kind of just had it laying around waiting for the X300 to release because I wanted to put this in the smallest form factor PC that I could come up with and I think the X300 is the perfect choice. So let's go ahead and get the X300 out of the box, and if you're not familiar with ASRock's Desk Mini series, basically these are super small form factor PCs. It comes with a case, STX motherboard, and power supply, so you have all of that covered right out of the box when you pull the Desk Mini out. All you really need to do is add some storage, RAM, and your CPU. And it's 5 inches by 5 inches. On the X300, they put this new faceplate on it. I think it looks pretty good. We have microphone in, headphone out, USB 3.0, and USB Type-C. Moving around back, we have a gigabit Ethernet port, USB 2.0, USB 3.0, VGA, full-size HDMI, full-size display port, and our power in. So there's really not much I.O. on the Desk Mini, but for my use case scenario, I think this is plenty. And you can always add two extra ports on the top here with their accessories kit. So this is the case and motherboard. There's also some extra accessories in here, like a smaller AM4 cooler. And this cooler just isn't going to cut it for the 4750. If you're going with something lower end, it will work. Let's say the 2200G or the 3200G. But keep in mind, those APUs do come with Wraith Stealth coolers. And if you pull the shroud off, it'll work. And it's going to cool much better than this included heatsink. I'd say this is really only suited for the Athlon APUs. This also comes with a power supply, 120 watt, it's a brick style. We also get two SATA connectors because the Desk Mini will house two 2.5 inch drives underneath the motherboard. We also get some rubber feet for the case itself and some extra screws to hold our SATA drives in. And to my surprise, this also includes the Intel, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi module, plus the antennas that we need to get everything up and running on the Desk Mini. So at 160 bucks, I really do think that this is a pretty decent deal if you want to build a small form factor PC. We're getting the motherboard, case, power supply, and even Bluetooth and Wi-Fi all included with this little kit. But there are some extras that you need to add to get this up and running. Like RAM, I'm going to be going with 16 gigabytes of crucial DDR4 running at 3200 megahertz, and hopefully I can get it up a little higher. I'm thinking I might be able to overclock this pretty easily to 3400. And because the built-in GPU on these APUs shares system memory, the faster it is, the better that built-in GPU or the built-in Radeon Vega graphics is going to perform. I would have loved to go much higher than this, but the price was really crazy on fast SODIMM RAM right now. As for storage, I'm going to go with the Team Force Carter Zero. This is the Z340 series. It's a 512GB M.2 NVMe. But since we have room for a couple 2.5 drives, I figured I'd go ahead and throw in a PNY CS900 SSD. This is a one terabyte drive, and this is going to hold all of my bigger files like games and such. And we've already mentioned the CPU that I'm going to be using, but we're going to go over the specs real quick. This is the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G. 8 cores, 16 threads, base clock of 3.6 GHz, max boost up to 4.4. It also has built-in Radeon Vega 8 graphics at 2100 MHz. To keep this CPU cool, I'm going to go with something that I haven't tested before. This is the ID Cooling IS-47K. You might have noticed that the fan is on the bottom of the CPU and this actually blows air up through the heatsink. Hopefully it'll exhaust all of that hot air right out of the desk mini because we do have those vents on the top. It's got six heat pipes here. It's rated for a 95 watt CPU and believe it or not, the 4750 is actually rated at 65. So I think it'll do a pretty decent job. So let's get to the build. Uh, there's four screws on the back of the desk mini and you're just going to pull this little tray right out. We will have to unplug the front IO and the power button here. But this is basically it. And they use an STX style motherboard or an STX size motherboard inside of the desk mini. I just happen to have an ITX laying here. And as you can see, even when it comes to these ITX boards, the STX board is absolutely tiny. The whole unit itself is actually 5 inches by 5 inches. So on the desk mini board, here's our M.2 slots. There's also one on the back for another NVMe. 
We also have our RAM slots, and really that's about it, minus these proprietary SATA connectors to allow us to install two 2.5 inch SSDs or hard drives in the back of this unit. And the drives sit right here, it's a pretty ingenious design, so we can have two 2.5 inch drives and two NVMe SSDs in this unit and add a ton of storage. So when I build one of these, I actually like to remove the motherboard from this bracketing system. There's four screws on all four sides. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that off. And now we just have the bare board so we can actually access that other M.2 slot on the back here. It also has the back plate pre-installed for that AM4 bracket. And there's actually two fan connectors here, two four pin fan connectors. I'm only gonna be utilizing one, but I have seen other people in the original desk mini add a smaller fan for exhaust. So this cooler that I'm gonna be using on the desk mini is pretty massive when you compare it to this STX board. So I really wanted to see if it would fit. But in order to get it to fit, I will have to remove the AM4 brackets that are pre-installed. Just kind of give me a test fit here. And it looks like I'm gonna to have to install everything before I do this heatsink setup. The M.2 Wi-Fi module, the NVMe, because I'm gonna be using the top slot, and my RAM, because as you can see, it's just gonna block everything out. So I do need to remove these plastic AM4 brackets and the back plate. And once I have that done, I can now install my M.2 Wi-Fi Bluetooth module. And I'll need to put my antennas on before I install my M.2 because we have two connectors here. This does come with the antennas and the wiring that we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this all into the Wi-Fi module before I move any further. So I've got my Wi-Fi and Bluetooth wire sorted. I'm gonna install this NVMe. Now I'm gonna install the CPU. It should drop right in here. Go ahead and push my lever back down. And before I put the heatsink on, I will need to add the RAM because we don't have much clearance here when the heatsink's installed. 16 gigabytes of DDR4. Hopefully it holds a stable overclock of 3400 to 36. I'm gonna test out both, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to do at least 34 with this. Now it's time to install the heatsink and I'm not gonna be using the included thermal paste that comes with the ID cooling cooler. I'm actually gonna be using some Noctua that I had left over. And I find it a lot easier to turn everything upside down to get this installed. I'm gonna line it up. I do have some thermal paste on the CPU. I don't wanna move it around too much. I wanna make sure it's lined right up. I'm gonna put in my four mounting screws for the heatsink itself and snug those down. And there we have it. I just need to route this CPU cooler fan. This is a massive heatsink for this little tiny board. So yeah, this looks like it's definitely gonna be tight inside of this case, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be able to fit it in there. I've done some measurements and it will slide in. The last thing I need to do is reinstall the motherboard inside of the desk mini bracketing system. And I'm gonna throw that one terabyte drive on the back of that unit. And it's really easy to install these drives. We have these proprietary SATA connectors. There's two connectors here, and it really doesn't matter which one goes where. I'm just gonna place this one on slot one. Plugs right in. And now we can install the SSD. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in before I mount it up. And we can mount this in with two screws coming in from the side. So I've got everything set up. I need to plug in my front IO and I'm gonna slide this back into the desk mini case. It's gonna be tight, but it will fit. That security tab on the back of the case itself is actually hitting the heat sink. So I kind of need to angle this upwards to get the whole unit back inside of the case. Just make sure everything's lined up and all of my wires are out of the way. and we can slide it right in here. But it should go in here pretty nicely. It's definitely snug, and that heat sink is right at the top of the desk mini. I mean, it is almost flush with the top. But it does fit, and it fits quite nicely. And just to give you an idea of how small this desk mini X300 is, I've placed a 12 ounce cola can and an Xbox controller right beside it just so you could get a little idea of the scale. This thing is absolutely tiny. Now I need to install Windows 10. I'm gonna install a bunch of applications. 
We're going to run some benchmarks, test some 4K video playback from YouTube and Plex, because really that's one of the big reasons I built this machine. I wanted to see what it could really do at 1080p. Okay, so I've installed Windows 10 Pro. Everything went off without a hitch. I've been up and running for a little while now. I've installed a bunch of applications to test out. As you can see, we got that 4750G. And from the BIOS, I was actually able to overclock this RAM to 3600 megahertz, and I haven't had any issues whatsoever. And for the GPU, I was also able to take that up just a bit by 100 megahertz from 2100 to 2200. So that should give us a tiny bump. Now I didn't overclock the CPU and I'm pretty sure this desk mini will not allow for it. But as you saw, we can overclock the RAM and the GPU using the desk mini. And I do think we have plenty of CPU power here. All right, so the first thing I threw at it, Cinebench R20 does an amazing job here for such a small form factor PC. We have those eight cores and 16 threads, so that definitely helps out with this. We scored a total of 4,547, coming right ahead of the Ryzen 7 1700X at 3455, and below the Threadripper 1950X with 16 cores. That came in at 6,670. So we're right in the middle of there, and I gotta say, this is a really decent score here. Next up, we have Geekbench 5, and this was actually really surprising here. I recently did a build for one of my buddies. It's a 3700X Mini ATX build. Single core, 1279, multi, 8199. Now, this is not overclocked, but as you can see, that 4750G is coming close to the 3700X, and it's beaten out the 3600 in single and multi core. I also ran 3D Mark, Fire Strike, and Time Spy. For Fire Strike, total score 4,209. And for Time Spy, 1,638. So these aren't top of the line scores by any means whatsoever, but I think it's pretty decent for the form factor we're working with here. When it comes to a small form factor PC like this, I kind of like to test a little bit of everything. So we're going to go with some 4K video playback from YouTube and just see how it performs. I have no doubt that it's going to play just fine but I still wanted to test it to get it out of the way. So I do have stats for nerds on. On the initial load-in, we had a few drop frames, but overall, I mean, this should work just fine. And by the way, I do have this video set to 4K, but it's actually a 5K video, so we're going to take it up there, and I'll show you that uh, since we're already loaded in, we're not going to have many drop frames at all, even with 5K video playback. 5K, 60 FPS, one drop frame. And I had a good feeling that this chip would handle 4K video playback from YouTube quite well. But I also want to test out some 4K video playback from Plex. So we're going to move over there now. And I am connected to one of my good buddy's servers. We have some test videos up here. We're going to go with this one. 4K, 60 FPS, 60 megabits per second. And this should load in pretty quickly because I am connected over Ethernet. And again, with Plex 4K video playback, I didn't think we'd have any issues. This would actually work pretty well as a server also, but right now I'm just streaming 4K, 60 FPS, 60 megabits per second, and it's handling it perfectly. Now I want to see how this little machine handles gaming. First up, we have CSGO, high settings, 1080p, and unfortunately with the newer CSGO updates, I can't get Afterburner to run on screen, but it is running in the background. I did enable the Steam overlay, so that's up in the top left hand corner, and we're getting an average of 108 FPS. If you ask me, this is definitely fully playable, and it's pretty awesome seeing it run on this super small form factor PC. Next up, we have Skyrim Special Edition, one of my favorite games, and I was actually expecting a little better performance out of this one. Uh, if I took it down to low, there is a good chance I could get a constant 60 out of it. But after it was all said and done, I was actually getting an average of 49 FPS, 1080p, medium settings. I was a little disappointed with the performance here, but uh, when it comes to Skyrim, if I really want to play it, I'll play the original, high settings, and it will run at 60 all day long in this machine. Next up, we have Forza Horizon 4, 1080p, low settings. We're getting an average of 60 FPS, and most of the time, I mean, it's over 60. This is a really enjoyable experience. I know we're at low settings, but it still looks great at 1080p, and it plays fine on this little machine.
Here we have GTA 5 1080p and I went through and set it up for normal and high settings. So it's a mix and at the end of my run I was getting 68 FPS on average. It's a really enjoyable experience on this machine. It's definitely not as good as a machine with let's say even a lower end GTX 1650. But it's totally playable on the 4750G in the desk mini. Fall Guys 1080p, high settings, it runs great. I mean, it's not the hardest game to run, but I have struggled on lower end systems with this game, so I figured I'd go ahead and throw it in. Doom Eternal, 1080p, low settings. I got an average of 62 FPS after it was all said and done. This is using the Vulcan backend and it does work really well with these Radeon GPUs. And finally, at least for this video, we have Crisis Remastered, 1080p, low settings, it's really struggling with this game here. I would stick with the original Crisis and you could get 60 out of it at medium settings, but I wanted to test the remastered version and unfortunately, it's just not doing great. By the end, I was actually at an average of 27 FPS. So far, I've been having a really good experience with the ASRock X300 and that Ryzen 7 4750G. It's definitely not a super gaming machine, but it will get you by, and I'd say it's a pretty good performer given the form factor here. Now while I was running all of these tests, I had this plugged into a kilowatt meter from the wall. With these little small form factor PCs, I always like to test power draw from the wall, and I also monitor temperature. So at idle, this averages 10.4 watts from the wall, and this was much lower than I ever expected. 4K video playback, I averaged 19.9 watts. Gaming at 1080p, this is GTA 5, 76.9 watts on average. And the maximum that I could pull out of this machine, even though we only have 120 watt power supply, was 136.3 watts from the wall. And that's an extreme test. For this, I run TimeSpy and Cinebench R20 at the exact same time. I want to stress out every component in this unit, the GPU and the CPU. It can get up there, but under everyday use and gaming, you'll never see this kind of wattage. This was an extreme use case scenario. And as for temps, they actually look really great with the CPU cooler that I chose. Idle, we're averaging 34 degrees Celsius. 4K video playback, it jumped up to around 43. While gaming, 1080p, GTA 5, averaged 67 degrees Celsius. And with that same extreme test that I pulled all that watts from, we only hit 87 degrees Celsius. And I'm pretty sure it started the thermal throttle there. But like I mentioned with the wattage test, this is an extreme use case scenario. You'll never see these kind of temps unless you want to run Time Spy and Cinebench at the exact same time. So in the end, this little build here really impressed me. I'm a big fan of this. It's my favorite APU build that I've done so far, and it could very well be my favorite small form factor build that I've done on my channel. Now, was it worth the price that I paid? Personally, I don't think so, but when you're building small, it does cost a bit more. And this APU really isn't publicly available, so you will have to overpay for it. Retail on this was supposedly $309. I picked mine up for $340 after a lot of haggling on eBay. And the total cost on this build was $698. So yeah, I do not think it was worth the price, especially given that these 9th gen laptops with the 1650 are going for around $500 now. And those will outperform this build in gaming performance, but you're not going to get that super small form factor like we have here. Now, I love this build, but in the end, I don't think it was worth close to 700 US dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. And you didn't see any emulation in this video because I will have a dedicated emulation video coming up very soon on this machine. I'm going to test out a ton of stuff, GameCube, Wii, Wii U, PS2, PS3, and so on and so on. So if you're interested in checking that video out, definitely stay tuned to the channel because I will have it coming up soon. But in the meantime, if you have any questions or if there's anything else you want to see running on this build, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in putting something like this together, I will have some links in the description. But like always, thanks for watching.